In today's video, we're gonna be checking out the Asterix 5500 XT, and this is from AMD, and this is an eight gigabyte card. And this one retails for roughly around $100. This has eight gigabytes of GDDR6 RAM. This features a base clock of 1,717 megahertz and a maximum boost clock of 1,845 megahertz, which compared to the default specs, the base clock for the stock RX 5500 looks like it's 1,187 megahertz, which is a pretty substantial boost, whereas the boost clock on the stock is 1,757, and the boost on this card is 1,845 megahertz. Um, the design is a little cheap, um, albeit kind of expected for a low-end card kind of like this. Um, it's not, uh, actually I would give them credit where credit's due is that they actually include a back plate here, which I find a lot of times um, on these cheaper cards they don't. And I think that back plates should be much more common, especially with the fragility of the back components, especially all the little capacitors on there. It is e very easy to accidentally bump this putting in a case and shear one of those off. And I don't think the average user is A, going to be able to find the part, or B, wanting to be soldering that part back on. So that's pretty solid there. Um, the fans on here don't actually have any uh, type of like temperature reading. So they don't automatically read when the temperature gets above a certain speed and then start speeding up. Albeit though, the fans on here are actually pretty quiet. Um, so I don't have any issues in regards to, you know, even at full load, that's really hard to hear um, with the case open, etc. Um, as a Overall though, the cooler reminds me a lot of, I want to say like the car, the, I know this is not a scam card, but in the previously we've looked at some of the scam uh, 1080 or 1050 TIs, and they usually have a uh, cooler that's like this. This does really good for those low TDP GPUs, albeit this also does require that 8 pin additional auxiliary 8 pin connector in order to provide power to run it. Um, I think, you know, for a cheap card like this, um, it depends on the market, like 1050 Ti did really well because it didn't require one of those, um, where this does. Um, I think that, you know, the 150 watts I think comes out of the PCIe lane was probably not enough for to run this card, um, but I definitely think that that would have been an op, you know, something that could have definitely boosted this card um, a little bit more in terms of what it was capable to fit into. Although it looks like the heatsink was properly milled out exactly for the design of this card, so it's not some like stock heatsink, they did at least take the time to make sure that the um, you know, the VRMs and everything matched where they were supposed to be. Um, overall though, the cooler at least looks adequate for what it's given. Um, and that, as I said, the back plate is definitely an added plus. Moving on into the gameplay and installation, this is a pretty small card. Um, it's actually smaller than the 1070 Ti that I was swapping this out with. Um, it's a small card and I don't think you'd have many issues actually fitting it into any of the cases. Um, specifically, this is, as I said, smaller as cards move, you know, as the modern cards move to larger and larger shrouds and uh, fans, uh, fitting this in here was no no difficult feat at all. Um, it fits well within both, um, you know, the vertical and horizontal size constrictions. I think you'd fit this into a lot of cases, especially for such a small card, it's kind of what you'd expect. Um, Output-wise, um, actually pretty solid outputs here as well. You got one HDMI and those three uh, display port outputs. Um, the fans, as I said, don't spin up at all, uh, or th the fans spin all the time, and I didn't really hear any difference in um, their speed as we started playing in games, um, so I really don't think that, I don't want to say there's much fan control, but the fan control doesn't seem to be that big of an issue if it is. Temperature-wise, we actually saw temps in like the mid-50s, upper 60s, um, at the absolute max, so I think the card is definitely cooled adequately, um, and it's actually rather quiet too. I'd definitely say this is probably... Given like the performance that we saw on some of the games that we played, um, this is probably not something you're going to want to do if you're like a super serious gamer. But if you're looking for something budget to maybe put in like a you know a media machine or maybe something just to play a couple light games on, this is definitely is something that I think could um, work good. Like we were just testing it with some Minecraft, some light gaming, and even in Minecraft, um, I think this was more of a CPU constraint, but we were having some lag spikes as well. I definitely think priced at this point, um, it's pretty solid. Um, it's a pretty solid buy, at least, if you're considering something that's a cheap GPU that's got 8 gigabytes of video memory, um, especially if you're doing anything like school-related, engineering-related, CAD-related. I think the 8 gigabytes of memory definitely sets apart from like a 1050 Ti. Um, I think that also just offers an additional, you know, ability of also having that GDDR6 memory. 
Um, so I think overall it's definitely a convincing option. If you want to say a little bit more well-rounded than just playing video games, um, definitely a more workstation task like video editing. Um, that extra memory would come in handy as compared to something like a 16.6 DTI or 1660 um, from NVIDIA. That would probably come in, uh, this would probably slightly benefit from having that two gigabytes of RAM. Um, but then again, those cards also do perform slightly better in gaming. So it ultimately just depends on what your ultimate goal is.